Yeah. <laughs> I even know. Yeah. When I heard that I was getting to come and bring the word of God to you, I was very excited. As you know, I am from America. I am blessed with an amazing wife. We have been married 17 years. God has blessed us with two amazing children. We have a daughter who is 14 years of age. And this tall. And we are blessed with a little boy who is four. And he is very small. He was actually born very early. He was born very early. When my wife was at 16 weeks pregnant, she broke her water. And she had no fluid. We were told the baby would not come. For eight weeks, the baby stayed inside with no water. But do you know who my God is? My God is the one who puts water in the desert. That is not just talking about the desert lands. The dry desert within my wife, God kept with water. And whenever they looked, there was no water. And they said, he will not grow. But see, God was his water. And after two months of being inside, with no fluid, they said, we must bring him now at 24 weeks. But the doctor said he will not live. You see, because doctors see with their eyes. God sees everything. The doctors gave up. God stepped in. And my son, who should be dead, is alive. Let me tell you something, church. We didn't know what to expect. We had no way to know what to expect. All we knew was we had to trust God. We had to believe God. Because God said we would have another child. And we said, okay, God, we will have another child. And when we thought we would not have the child, but the child would die, we had to trust God. Because His ways are higher. And He knew the journey He wanted us to walk. For the glory of His name. Hello? Not our name. Our lives, if we are in Christ, are for the glory of His name. Yes. That's true. Do you know someone who must have known this? His name is Joshua. He was with Moses. Do you know Moses? Remember Moses, who was spared by God. Who was able to grow up in Pharaoh's house. But yet he was not an Egyptian. He was with the people of God. And then Moses went away from Egypt. God called Moses back. And when Moses came back, God used Moses to do many things. Things that only God could do. And he sent plague after plague after plague so that Pharaoh would let the people go. But 
Pharaoh did not let the people go. So God continued to do his wonders. And the final wonder he did in Egypt before the people were freed was he came by his spirit to take the firstborn. But let me tell you of the grace of God. For those who would trust. For those who would obey. And take the blood of the Lamb. Put it over their doorposts. His spirit would pass by. And they would have life. For those who did not trust and obey God. There would be a cost. The Spirit came. And cries were heard throughout the land by all of those who were not obedient to God. And the people knew. Even Pharaoh's people knew that God had come that night. And Pharaoh told Moses, You and your people go. They were set free. And you would think that the people would say, Praise God! And when troubles would come their way, they would say, We trust God! But you see, the people of God are sinners. The people of God sometimes are weak in their faith. Because all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are a bunch of sinners mixed with other sinners. Praise God for grace. Amen. Amen. Praise God for grace. So these people, they leave and they get to the sea. And when they saw the water, then they said, God, we trust you to make a way. No. They cried out to God. They cried to Moses. Did God free us just to bring us here to have us be killed? Did the people miss what God had just done? Did the people miss what God just did? Did they miss the power of God? That just a few moments later they lose faith? And Pharaoh's army comes. But see, praise God for grace. And even though there was water, and even though the people complained, God did another wonder. And he parted the sea. And God's people did not walk on the wet soil. God's people walked on dry ground. Because when God makes a way, God's way is perfect and complete. And when the people of God got through, Pharaoh's army thought they could come along too. They thought God's blessing was for them even though they chose not to follow God. Well, God's people had passed. The sea came back. And the people saw this. The people knew that God had protected them. Because God continues to work. And then the people get out into the desert. On their way to the promised land. And they get thirsty. And they get hungry. And did they believe that the God who could part the sea. 
could provide food and water? Did they believe that God who got them out of Egypt could provide them with food and water? No. Instead, they cry out to Moses. They don't even cry to God, they cry to Moses. Did God bring us out here just to die? Is that who God is? God had used his great wonder and power to set the people free. And even when they complained, God parted the sea and protected them. And now they complain because they are hungry and thirsty? Should they not have just said, Oh, Father God, will you please provide us food and drink? They do not ask God, they complain to their leader. And God is graceful. And so in His grace, He did not acknowledge the complaint of His people. Instead, he just provided for his people. Because he's good. Our God is good. And they continue towards the promised land. And they went through many trials. They went through many trials. And when they got to a place where they knew they might be able to go to the promised land, Moses sent 12. He wanted them to know, could we go into the promised land? Could we go to the promised land? The 12 went out. They saw the promised land. They came back. They told Moses. And 10 of them. This is what they said. There are giants in the land. We can't take this. The army is too big. Do you know what they are saying? Our God is not big enough. But two. Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb. They said, no, we need to trust God. God said we're going to the promised land. God knows who is in the promised land. Because when God calls us somewhere, God knows who we're going to see. When God calls us to something, He knows what is there that we will face. He does not call you to what He does not already know. Joshua and Caleb, they trusted God. But the ten said no. And do you know what the people said? We will trust the ten. The people should have said we will trust God. But they, but they trusted man. And to Moses should have said be quiet. We are going to the promised land. But they did not go. And so because they refused to obey God, the oldest were not going to be able to go to the promised land. Moses, who would walk that journey, would not be allowed to step foot in the promised land. But God in His grace, He did let them see the promised land. He let him see it. And then when Moses died, Moses went to the true promised land, heaven. But someone had to leave the people. And that was Joshua. God told Joshua because Joshua was faithful. Then it's time for him to leave the people. 
And do you know what he tells Joshua? He tells him three times the same truth. But with a different reason each time. He tells Joshua, be strong and courageous. Because you see, you may not know what is coming. But you must trust God. And church, trusting God takes strength. Trusting God takes courage. Because anyone can live like the world. Anyone can live in sin. It takes strength to deny yourself. It takes strength to love someone you do not want to love. It takes strength to show the grace of Jesus Christ when you don't think someone deserves it. Joshua 1, verse 6. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Joshua 1 6, and then keep your Bible open. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. They saw the power of God. And then when something was not right, instead of trusting God, they complained. And God tells Joshua, be strong and courageous because you're going to lead these people to the land I promised. Now you see, people knew there was a promised land. And they knew one day they would be there. They couldn't have been to the promised land a whole lot sooner. But they disobeyed. But their disobedience does not mean God does not fulfill His promise. Do you hear? God's people may disobey. God's people may be unfaithful. But God will always be faithful because His name is faithful. And God cannot deny Himself. They may not have gotten to the promised land when they thought. But God will fulfill His promise. And they were going to get to the promised land. And He said, Joshua, you will lead these people. You will lead these people who will complain. You will lead these people who will always disobey me. 
You will lead these people who will not appreciate you. You will lead these people who will sometimes worship other gods, although they say, I am their God. You will lead these people. So be strong and courageous. God knows it will take strength. Because God knows who these people are. The people that God will sometimes call you to lead. Do you want to know something about them? They are made in God's image. They are made in God's image. And they are also sinners. Sinners being led by sinners. Because see, pastors are not perfect. Praise God for grace. And we lead people who are not perfect. We lead people who sometimes want their own way. And sometimes we want our own way. And it takes strength to stay focused on God. Because there are some people you may want to give up on sometimes. But God does not give up on people. And when we are weak, when our strength is small, His grace will be sufficient. In fact, His strength is made perfect in your weakness. He tells Joshua, I know who these people are. And I call you to lead them. So I tell you, be strong and courageous. And then in verses 7 and 8, he tells them, be strong and courageous again. And this is what he says. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it, and then you will be prosperous and successful. <laughs> Mamma <laughs> He says, be strong and courageous. And know my word. Know the word that I have spoken. Meditate on it day and night. This does not mean just read one verse and then forget what you read. Think about what you are reading. What is God trying to say to you? Think on those things. Not what people say. What God's word says. And then stay straight with God's word. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Meditate on his word. Because see, the only way you will ever be prosperous and successful is by, is by your life being based on his word. 
Prosperous. Success. The world gives us a perspective of what that means. I can be the richest man in the world. I can be the poorest man in the world. If I have Jesus, if I stay true to Jesus' word, then I am already prosperous and successful. Now the world wants you to think that it is about becoming rich. This is how you become rich. You let the king of all kings come into you. Fill him, fill you with himself. You follow him. And there is no one that can stand against you. There is nothing that can be taken from you. Because he is always with you. You may take my house. I'm still covered. I am still sheltered by Jesus. You may take my money. He will provide for me. Because we trust. We trust what his word says. And his word is faithful and true. We may speak and make mistakes with our words. God never makes a mistake with what he says. Hello? Then, he says one more thing. In verse 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. He tells him again, be strong and courageous. Knowing that I am with you. You see, be strong and courageous because I know the people you will lead. Be strong and courageous by knowing my word. And be strong and courageous because you know I am with you. The world may try to get you to think that God is not with us. What gives the world the right to tell us that? The world has no power over what God will or will not do. If God says He is with us, the church God is with us. Amen. No matter what the world says, the world does not own us. The world cannot take us. The world has nothing to offer us. We have something to offer the world. Hello? Amen. We get confused. Sometimes people who follow Jesus think the world has something to offer them. But you remember what I just said. The world has nothing to offer you. You have something to offer the world. Hello? Amen. And we need to remember this. We need to remember what being strong and courageous looks like. And there is something about strength. There is something about strength. 
Jesus showed us what strength looks like. How difficult must it have been to come into a manger when he started at the throne. He began at the throne. And then he comes to a manger for a people who do not care for a people that would want to kill him but see he knew that he was coming for the world how difficult must it have been to feed the 5,000 when he knew the people he was feeding wanted to have him killed how difficult must it have been for him to die on the cross for the sins of everyone including the Pharisees who were his very own people including the Pharisees who spoke lies about him talk about strength talk about love I do not have to question God's love for me while I was still a sinner Christ died for me he died for all of my sins he died for all of your sins and you know how I know because he said, it is finished, the debt has been paid. Do you hear me? It is finished, the debt has been paid. How many of you go to the market? Hmm? When you check out with your groceries, do you watch to make sure that everything you bought is being put Put in your basket? Yes. Do you want to make sure things are not there that you did not put there? And if you put it there, you want to make sure you pay for it, yes? Jesus said the debt is paid. When he paid that debt, he made sure he knew everything he was paying for. Just like you do when you go to the market. He did on the cross. And he died for all. So he knows what he took. He knows what he paid for. Whether you choose to follow him or not, he knows what he paid for. Whether you choose to follow him or not, he fearfully and wonderfully made you in your mama's womb. He must have amazing strength and courage. This world will want you to forget that. If you, are, if you belong to Jesus, how can you forget it? I think about my little boy. Ever since he was in the hospital as a little bitty baby, half a kilo, I would sing to him. <coughs> and I still sing to him now. I sing many songs to him. But there's one song I sing every day. <coughs> it is before he goes to bed. <coughs> it is a version of Jesus Loves You. It's my word that Jesus loves you, yes. But one time we were out eating somewhere and there were lots of noises. 
And for my little boy, it was too much. Too many noises. Too many things going on around us. And he looked at me and he said, Daddy, Jesus loves you, Daddy. Jesus loves you, please. He was telling me, Daddy, you see, Jesus loves you. He wanted me to hold him. And he wanted me to sing. And at first, I didn't want to. We were in a restaurant. There, there are people here. But I understood what he was asking. He wanted to go to a safe place. In the middle of all the noise. He needed to be reminded of a safe place. So I helped him. And I sang. Jesus loves you. Oh, yes, he does. Jesus loves you. Oh, yes, he does. My Jesus, he loves you. Oh, yes, he does. The Bible, it'll tell you so. Oh, yes, Jesus loves you. Oh, yes, my Jesus loves you. He is faithful and true. He will always carry you. Oh, my Jesus, He loves you. sing that to him. But when I sing it sometimes, it reminds me of Jesus' love. And there's not many words. Very simple. Jesus loves you. Oh, yes, he does. We should be confident that he loves us. I wrote a song one time that says, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves the world. And I had it on my computer. And I was playing it, and Jaden was right there with me. And he said, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves me. And he stopped me. He said, oh yes he does, daddy. Oh yes he does, please. And I didn't understand. Because when he hears Jesus loves you, he immediately thinks, yes he does. You say nothing else, so you say, yes, he does. And, and I laughed. But I thought about what he said. If you have walked with Jesus for time, sometimes we just begin to do things for Jesus. And we forget. He loves us. Oh, yes, he does. We forget that our life is only because of his love for us. It is not about doing good things. If you love Jesus, if you let him love you, and you focus on that love. And you are confident in that love. 
You won't do good things. You will do great things. Hello? So church, I want to encourage you this morning. Joshua needed to remember that God loves him that God will be with him. God knows the plan he has for him. Joshua better know the word. But he needed to know more than anything. God loves him. Oh yes he does. Joshua was on that side of the cross. Church, we're on this side of the cross. God has proven his love for us. God has proven his love for us. When you go throughout this year, you may not always understand God's plan. You don't have to. You just trust God. You let your life be focused on God. And when the world gets noisy, when you hear too many distractions, you act like my son Jaden. I need to act like my son Jaden. And just stop. Stop in the middle of all the noise. Stop in the middle of everything you do not understand. Jesus Jesus loves you. Oh yes, he does. My Jesus, he loves Oh yes he does for the Bible it'll tell you so and remember and remember Amen. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you that you are always with us. Father, I know we can only be strong and courageous because of you. So may your spirit help us be strong and courageous. May we all live in your grace. May we encourage others in your grace. And Father, when people see us, may they not see us, but may they see you, and may they believe that you love them, oh yes you do. Continue to remind us of your love. You gave us Jesus. You saved us. You redeemed us. You made all things new. Because of Jesus. Because of your love. So it's in his name that we pray to you. And all the people said, Amen.